Well, hello again, everybody, and welcome back. It's Rob from PMDG, back with another episode of our 737 Small Bites series. This episode, we're going to continue our discussion of customizing the displays in the flight deck of the 737. Specifically, we're going to be focused on the engine and status displays in this episode. The 737 NG series has been around for a while, and as most airplanes that are produced in large numbers, once you get a lot of customers involved, there tends to be a lot of little things that customers ask for in order to make the airplane fit their fleet picture better. Boeing has been very accommodating in providing those requests. And as such, PMDG has put a lot of effort into making sure that we have them in there as well so that you can customize the flight deck of your 737 to match just about any airline configuration that you can find. So we're going to do a quick review here in the beginning. Let's jump into the flight deck. All right, here we are. So we're going to go down to the left FMS CDU. We're going to press the menu key, then PMDG setup. We're focused on the aircraft options here because these options are part of the aircraft itself. And once again, the aircraft is November 737 Bravo Whiskey. This will be whichever airplane you load. In my case, it's 737 Bravo Whiskey because that's ours. The changes that we make under this menu will stick. You don't have to save them. They will remain. They take place automatically and immediately as soon as you affect the change in the menu. And the next time you load the airplane, it will remember the settings that you selected. So go ahead and click on displays. We'll take a quick scroll through the menu here, but before we do, quick review. There's nine pages. We're currently looking at page one of nine. The title here at the top of the page tells you what you're looking at. In this case, we're looking at displays, primary flight display. It tells you that right there. We can then use the next page and the previous page buttons down here in order to scroll through that list to see what else is available. So for example, Clicking there, we've got page two, page three of PFD. Then we've got EFIS map displays, navigation displays, which was our previous episode. There's two pages of that. And then we have three pages of engine and fuel controls. And those are the ones that we're gonna be focused on here today. All right, first up, you're gonna notice at the top of page seven, the engine side-by-side -side display is set to off by default, and this is what most 737s will look like. You've got an upper display and a lower display. The engine information is split between them. This option here allows you to change the way the information is laid out, and you can either have it on both displays or just on the top display, leaving this display completely non-functional early in the delivery series there were a number of airlines that only wanted everything on a single display rather than split between the two and this is what it looked like. So you can see this display unit now is functionally inoperative and you can tell by looking at these two selector buttons up here for the multifunction displays you can see they have these pretty little in-op placards on them which means that they don't do anything but if you want to have that lower display unit available to you, you can set this selector to off and then come up here and you can see you've got engine and systems. Whoop. There we go. You've got engines and systems. And when you tap on the engine button, you'll be looking at what are considered to be your secondary engine display parameters. And you can keep pushing on it and it will change the way the information is laid out here. So. Again, this is the normal view. You push it again. You're seeing all your secondary information on the lower display. If you push it a third time, it collapses it all to the upper display. So if you had a parameter that you wanted to keep an eye on in flight, if you thought you might have an oil quantity issue or something and you wanted to move it up into your view, you could tap on this button a couple times to bring it back up there. And tapping a third time, this is again the normal view with the fuel flow there. On that lower display, if you tap the system button, there's a whole bunch of information that shows up there, and we'll cover that in just a moment. Line two is the EGT color change inhibit. This is a selectable timer that will change the color of the EGT 
indicator if you have overtempt an engine for more than the allowed time period. So you can set this to five minutes or 10 minutes. That's something that would be set by your airline. It's a tattletale, beware. All right, we've got uh, the oil quantity indication. We brought up the lower engine display here and you can see the engine oil quantity is being displayed in percentage. If you would like for it to be displayed in quarts, you can simply select that. And when you look down here, you'll see the oil quantity is now displayed in quarts. Again, that is something that would be chosen by your airline, and you can select it to match whatever configuration you like here. Line 5 is low oil quantity inverse. If your oil quantity gets low, it will change the color of that quantity display. Line 6, high vibration alert. Vibration is always bad in aviation, especially in a turbine engine. And if you've got that set, you'll notice there's a vibration display here on the bottom of the secondary engine display. And the high vibration alert will just make that visible to you if there is unwanted engine vibration. Moving on to page 8 of 9, Max Continuous Thrust Bugs. If you spend a lot of time watching 737 videos on YouTube, you've probably noticed that at the top of the engine display, in some of the videos you've seen, there's a little yellow tick mark and some green text, and in some videos, it's not present. Well, both of those are covered on this page, and both of those are airline selectable options. So here you can see at the top of the display, see that little yellow tick mark? That's your maximum continuous thrust bug. So if we turn that off here, you'll notice now it's gone. Again, it is a pilot awareness information mark that helps you to know if you have reached maximum continuous thrust for the engine because obviously that's not something you want to go exceeding with any regularity. Again we can just turn that right on and off and you can just use that to match whatever airplane configuration you're interested in. Next we're going to be looking at the show reference N1 number. If you look at the top of the N1 display see that green text that is the reference N1, N1 being the big fan in the front of the engine. And these numbers right here tell you what your thrust reference is. So that's the thrust number that you want to see set. Now you can change what gets displayed here. You can have it never be displayed, which is true for some original 737 next gens. You can have it display only when there's a D rate used, in which case it declutters unless the crew has selected derated thrust and here let me just bring up a page here to show you that where was I? I could have been better prepared okay so we're going to put in an assumed temperature here of 35 degrees and you'll notice that now that we've put a temperature in there the derated thrust is being displayed as a derated thrust at 35 C and it shows us reference N1. I'll go ahead and clear that off again and you can see once I remove the D-rate it took the text away from the top of the N1 display. Or you can have it set to always and it will always show you what the flight management system is computing as your reference N1. Going on to page 9 we've got some fuel related items for you. Some of these are kind of fun. They let you really get into some nitty-gritty customization. First item here on this page, the fuel low alert below. And this is your ability to set the quantity at which you will get a fuel low alert from the airplane. This is again an airline selectable option. It depends on what the airline's fuel policies are. They told Boeing how they wanted this set at the time they bought the airplane, but you'll see it appear right here on your upper display unit. So now if we want to change this, we can just go ahead and we can flip flop back and forth between a thousand pounds and two thousand pounds. And then in your main tanks, if you get below that value, you will get a fuel low indication right here. Now, a little extra points for you on your check ride oral exam. The airplane doesn't actually watch this in pounds. It's told to the crew in terms of pounds or kilograms, but the airplane actually is plumbed 
to watch it in gallons. It's either watching for 150 gallons or 300 gallons. So it's not actually a thousand pounds or 2,000 pounds, but it's close. All right, so I'm gonna adjust the fuel load on the airplane here in order to demonstrate to you how this looks once we get the fuel level down into the low fuel warning. So you can see here now we've got less than 2,000 pounds in each main tank and therefore we've got a fuel low warning. Now you watch this, I'm going to switch it to 1,000 pounds or 150 gallons if you were paying attention. We now have more than that quantity in each of those main tanks so the fuel low indication has gone away. I don't recommend flying the airplane until that comes on. Landing with the low fuel lights on just increases your stress level unnecessarily. Okay, I've returned the fuel level back to normal here because we're going to need it for this next one. The fuel total display, obviously you probably figured out where it is because we've been playing around with it, but you can change this. Hang on one second, I've lost my pointer. There we go. All right, so you can change this so that you have a fuel total or not. Early airplanes didn't always have the fuel total. It became more standard much later, but if you don't want the fuel total, you can instead get these round dials that show you the fuel quantity in each tank. And they were really designed to mirror the early analog gauges from the 737 Classic. Next down we have pounds or kilos. So you can choose which system you'd like to see your fuel weight displayed in, and you'll also notice on line one of this page, we changed to 450 and 900 kilos instead of the 1,000, 2,000 pounds. I'm in the U.S. I'm going to change it back to pounds just because that's how my brain works. All right. FCS indication, off or on. The fuel control system indication, off or on, is an indication of what's going on with the fuel control system during an engine start. And it will show it to you on the lower engine display. You'll see it on the N2 uh, as you are going through the start. You'll see indications there to kind of enhance your, not, your understanding of what's taking place during the engine start. You can turn that on or off if you like. I like to have it on. I figure more information is always better. Next up we've got the brake temperature indicator. This is always a popular option for airlines flying their 737s into short runways or high and hot areas. You can turn that on or off and it appears right here on your lower status display. It'll tell you what the temperature your brakes are after all of those landings. Alright, that covers customizations on the engine and status displays. Thanks for coming along. I hope you learned something. We'll see you real soon.